Hello everybody and welcome to part 3 of my respawnable series where I'll be trying to kill enemies in multiplayer using every weapon in the game. In today's part we are going to start off by playing with the jewel grenade pistols. I do want to quickly say a couple of things just like with every part in this series this is just me trying to get multiplayer kills with every weapon in the game but with some of these weapons it was just not possible for me to do so and I think jewel grenade pistols is one of those weapons where I just didn't get a kill with that weapon. I actually got a kill kind of using the weapon, but it wasn't the actual weapon that got uh, the kill for me. It was my uh, death from below grenade that killed the enemy. But, uh, you know, the enemies here in multiplayer are really, really, really difficult. In these last few days of uh, when multiplayer was still available, you know, it was pretty much impossible to find someone using you know, balanced weapons or balanced equipment. Everybody pretty much used the most overpowered things they have. And uh, here's that kill that I got there. You know, I hit him with the jewel grenade pistols with one grenade, and then my death from below grenade got the kill. So, not a kill with the weapon, but at least it was a kill using the weapon, kind of. Now we're on to the plasma shotgun. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna end up leaving this match pretty soon here because I mean, you can just see uh, the enemies, they're using bubble, they're using trap metals to block paths. So I can't go up here. It's uh, really, really annoying, and again, it's actually just impossible for you to do anything here. Watch this. This guy's using a ton of protection, and you can see they're point blank shooting him. Doesn't matter. So I'll leave that match, and uh, hopefully we find some different people here. And nope, same guy. <laughs> so let's leave once again. Okay, so now we're in Frozen Bay, and I do think I got a couple kills with the weapon here. Uh, another thing that I wanted to talk about is the footage. The gameplay that you're seeing is uh, probably going to be pretty bad because it has all been recorded on my newer phone. And for some reason, I am just not as good at playing Respawnables on my newer phone. I don't know why that is, but uh, all of these parts in the series have been recorded on my newer phone. And the gameplay, I've rewatched some of the footage. It's pretty bad. Um, I used to be a lot better on my old phone, but uh, that one's gone, or, uh, well, pretty much gone. So, yeah. I apologize if this footage is newbie because that right there was absolutely terrible. I could have easily killed that guy, but uh, I just sucked right there. So, yeah, you might say, oh, you're just blaming it on your phone. Yeah, yes, I am because uh, it's actually true. But uh, I do think I end up getting a kill here with the weapon. Watch this. Point blank. At least that was still a one shot. And he was using, uh, I think, at least 30% um, damage reduction. But maybe he was using glass cannon, which kind of, you know, reduced his health in uh, by half. So maybe that was, you know... Again, you kind of don't know which uh, masteries your enemies have. But yeah, anyway... As you can see there, two kills. Actually got the guy with death from below as well. And now we're on to the dual revolvers. Not sure what that guy did right there. Maybe he used his active skill. Because I think one of those uh, abilities of that active skill for the dual blunderbuss is uh, an explosion. But I think it just kills yourself. So I'm not entirely sure what happened there. He might have just shot me though. But yeah, here we do end up getting the kill on Mr. Raid Hulk. Unfortunately though, I do end up dying right here. So let's move on from the dual revolvers to the Zap Gun, which is probably one of the worst guns in the entire game. But surprisingly though, I do end up getting a kill with it eventually. I also quickly want to thank Kleb89. In my last part, I was complaining about how the game now takes an insane amount of time to load, to boot up. But apparently you can just turn off your Wi-Fi before starting up the game. And this makes Respawnables load a lot faster. And you know, when I tried it, I was happy to see that it is actually true. The game now loads faster than it has ever done before, so I'm very pleased with that. And again, I want to thank this guy for, you know, telling me about that. It has led to me playing the game a lot more now, and it's just, you know, so much fun to jump back into it and start playing without having to sit through an entire two or three minutes of loading. And again, I'm playing the game a lot more now because of this, and I'm very happy about that. But anyway, I'm still using the Zap Gun, and I actually swapped my gadget to the Stun Grenades, and they're going to come in handy here in a minute. But for now, we're just getting shot in the bag by Mr. Kalati, or however you pronounce his name, using the Pawpaw. And just throwing a Stun Grenade at him right here. But of course, 
He had already shot me, so I had no chance whatsoever of killing him. But you know, the Pawpaw is easily one of the most overpowered weapons in the entire game. And it's actually going to be a while before you'll see me using this weapon in this series because it was one of the last weapons that was actually added to the game. And right here I do end up getting the kill. Actually stunned two guys there with the stun grenade and right there killing him by headshot, Mr. TR Rudy. And then we get immediately shot in the back by Pokey2007. So now we're on to the golden weapons starting off with the golden rookie. Of course, you get these weapons through your prestige rank. Each time you reach level 50, you can claim these rewards, and then you're level 1 again, and you can do that multiple times to get some pretty cool weapons. And I always liked this feature, you know, you get the weapons for free just by leveling up, and I thought that was pretty cool. And this was actually introduced uh, in Summer Camp 2017. That update introduced this uh, feature, and I remember people mentioning that idea a few years before that even so that's actually one of the few times that digital legends had actually listened to the community and you know they ended up you know uh, expanding upon this feature and some other updates as well you know the first four weapons that were added were the golden rookie the golden shotgun that you are seeing right now the golden blunderbuss and the golden pistol and then later they added the golden bazooka and the golden sniper and even later after that they added the golden heavy machine as well as the dual golden pistol and all of the golden weapons you will see in this part and one thing that I uh, like with the golden weapons most of them are basically just upgraded versions of their original non-golden noob weapon counterparts you know with the golden rookie the golden shotgun golden blunderbuss golden bazooka golden sniper and golden heavy machine those are all just upgraded versions of their you know, noob weapon counterparts, so it's interesting to see those newbie weapons get, you know, completely transformed into something, you know, a, a lot, most of these weapons are overpowered, so that's pretty cool to see. And then of course you have the golden pistol and the golden dual pistol. And the golden pistol was actually supposed to be in the original version of the game when it first launched, but allegedly the developers thought it was too overpowered so they cut it out before the game released. However, they did leave in a couple of things to indicate that at one point the gun did exist. Most notably, there is an achievement called Weapons Collector, where you can literally see the golden pistol in the shopping cart along with other weapons, and that clearly indicates that they have already created the image of the weapon. There's also another achievement that was not in the game's final release, called Killing with Style, where you have to get 50 kills with the golden pistol but players found out about this achievement and thought that maybe you could get it at some point kind of hidden if you complete all the achievements you could probably get the golden gun which people just call it the golden gun at that point but that wasn't the case and then lastly there is also uh, just a simple image from the teaser trailer from the respawnables logo where one of the characters is seen holding a pistol it's not the dual pistols, it's just a single handgun. And there were no other weapons in the game at that point that could resemble that weapon. So you know, it was probably intended to be the golden gun, the golden pistol. One thing that is just kind of hard to believe is that the developers would have cut it out of the game because of a lack of balance. I mean, Digital Legends is not exactly known for, you know, having a balanced uh, arsenal of weapons whatsoever. Uh, even from the very beginning of the game, you know, certain weapons were just <laughs> superior to others in uh, very noticeable ways. And actually, you know, the golden pistol that we have now, I would say is probably one of the weaker golden weapons in the game. So it's just a little bit confusing, but yeah. And you know, there were other weapons that at some point were either teased or leaked that made it into the game. And some of them did not make it into the game. So, you know, I might make a video about that at some point in the future because it is a little bit interesting. Let me know if you'd like to see that. But anyway, I have a ton of video ideas. I just need to put in the time and effort into making them. Of course, this game is dead, so it is a little bit less motivating to do so because, I mean, you know, at this point, who cares? But I am still committed to do so because I love the game and, you know, I love talking about the game and all of that. So for instance, I want to make another video talking about scopes as well as talking about Blast Radii because I think I can provide enough new information to warrant a part 2 to those videos. Um, I want to of course continue this series trying to get multiplayer kills with every weapon in the game. 
and this series is going to continue for a very long time because I have a ton of weapons left and a ton of footage left. And the further we get into this series, you're going to notice that I'll give each weapon some additional playing time because in these earlier parts, there are some weapons that I'll die with right away after getting a kill. And then the weapon pretty much only has 15 seconds of use in the video, which is a shame. And the later parts in this series are definitely going to be improving upon that. So, you know, the quality of these videos should go up uh, the further we get into the series. However, in the later parts, there are definitely a lot more glitches as well. So, you know, the quality of the matches is going to decrease quite a bit because there will be a ton of out-of-the-map glitches that I, you know, have no control over. But at least each weapon will see more use in the video, so that's a little bit of a consolation, I guess. Also, I want to get back into weapon reviews eventually. Maybe cover some old Respawnables updates and changes that were made. You know, talking a little bit more about the history of Respawnables. I know pretty much no one's going to care about that, but I do, and I might make a video about that. So as you can see, now we're on to the Hunter Rifle. This is actually the first top event weapon ever released from the first event that came out. All the way back in 2014, the Egg Hunt from the 2014 Easter Holiday Update. And from this point onward, you will see pretty much every single weapon in the order that it was released in. Because there have been a ton of outliers so far. And that is because most of the weapons from 2013 to early 2014 have had their place in this weapons list based off of the level requirement that they were at when they came out. Not necessarily based off of the order that they came out in. You know, I've basically just ordered the weapons in a way that makes the most amount of sense to me. And that's partially based off of some old Respawnables videos, the layout of those weapons, as well as just personal preference. But as you can see, now we're on to the Thumper, which is probably one of my most favorite weapons of all time. I also really love the Hunter Rifle that I just played with. I also got a few kills with that weapon, which, uh, you know, I did not expect, but that is also really cool. But yeah, the Thumper is easily one of my most favorite weapons in the game. Love that weapon. I got it in the 2018 Summer Camp event. So yeah. Now we're on to the Automatic Shotgun, another weapon that I love and wanted for a while. Same as the Thumper. Not, I don't like it as much as the Thumper, but I do still love this weapon a lot as well. Uh, I first got it uh, in the Shock Force kit with the SF headset, which was really cool. And uh, th the Automatic Shotgun is always pretty much at the bottom of of everybody's weapons list it was always like at the very bottom for some reason but yeah I ordered it for the first time chronologically there and of course that weapon came out in the uh, Road to Glory event the first Road to Glory event from 2014 that update actually don't think that was I mean whatever I'm not gonna get into that I don't actually think that that update was an official update if that makes sense it was just an event that came out and you didn't have to update the uh, the game at that point, but I'm not sure. I wasn't really playing the game, um, you know, at that point, or at least not uh, for the events, if, if you know what I mean. Now we're on to the dual energy pistols. So we kind of jumped, you know, quite far ahead, but that's because we've already had the plasma shotgun as well as the dual stake launchers from the Ghostbusters 30th anniversary event as well as the Monster Mash event, you know, the Halloween from 2014. Oh yeah, and before I forget, we've also already seen the Jewel Rookie Machine Guns from the 2014 Summer Camp event. And now we're on to another one of my most favorite weapons of all time, the Fire Fist. And this weapon came out during the 2014 Ninja Path event, which was released a little bit into the 2014 Holiday Update. And the Ninja Path event is actually my all-time most favorite event. Partially because it had amazing prizes, partially because it was fairly easy, partially because it, it was just really cool with the mechanics, but more personally because it was the first ever event I completed, and that makes the Fire Fist the first ever top event weapon I ever got, which is also reason why it's one of my most favorite weapons of all time. But you know, the Fire Fist is just a really cool weapon overall, and I love the way the weapon looks, I love the look of the fireballs it shoots out, and the weapon itself is actually pretty good. It's fairly balanced, I would say, but it's still powerful and capable of taking out elite players if they're using, you know, balanced weapons like revolver, you know, howitzer, things like that. I think you should be able to compete, you know, blunderbuss, double barrel shotgun, things like that. And it's a really fun weapon to play with as well. But one thing I don't understand is that pretty much nobody used this weapon for whatever reason. 
I guess they were expecting a more powerful weapon like the Thumper or dual stake launchers that, you know, previous events had offered. But I don't know, man. It's still a really, really fun weapon to play with, in my opinion. But anyway, now the gun that I'm playing with right here, the Dragon's Breath Cannon, this is definitely a weapon that is fairly overpowered, and it is way better than the Fire Fist, that's for sure. However, it has also sort of been rendered obsolete thanks to the addition of the Sea Dog Cannon, which is very similar to the Dragon's Breath, but it is better in numerous ways, which kind of renders the Dragon's Breath Cannon obsolete, but it is still a very fun gun to play with nonetheless. And that gun was added, of course, during the 2015 Chinese New Year update. Now for the final weapon that we're going to be using in this video, we are playing with the Hunter Shotgun. This gun was added to the game in the 2015 Easter holiday update, and it was the top event weapon of the second Egg Hunt event. And it is maybe a little bit unbalanced, maybe a little too strong, but certainly not nearly as overpowered as something like the Dragon's Breath Cannon, that's for sure. And that's pretty much all I have to show you for this video. In the next part, we're going to be starting off using the Shockwave Launcher. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any feedback, please leave it down in the comments below. I'll be sure to take a look at it. That's it. That's all. Bye.